It's do or die for the Blazers. After a bad loss and with their backs against the wall, Rip City hopes a home court advantage can force a game seven. We gotta be stronger, we gotta be tougher, we gotta be more aggressive. We're live ahead of the action. Plus, meet a super fan from the Drexler days with one seriously decked out man cave. Rip City, baby. Let's get this game tonight. KGW News at six starts now. Let's begin with a live look from the Moda Center. Action will be happening there tonight. Rip City tips off against the Denver Nuggets in about an hour and a half. Portland has to win tonight or else the season is over. Right now, Denver leads that series three games to two after an ugly game on Tuesday. If the Blazers win tonight, we play the Nuggets for a seventh and final game on Mother's Day. Let's get much closer to the action right now. Dan and Laurel at the Moda Center just outside. Take it away, guys. Hey, it's a good start, isn't it? The weather is beautiful. The music is playing behind us. Fans are starting to show up. Tip off at 7.30. As you said, it's do or die. This is game six. It doesn't get more important than this. They got to win. And if they win, you mentioned it, Chris, game seven. They go back to Denver on Mother's Day. What a great Mother's Day present that would be for all the moms, for them to win in Denver game seven, go on to the Western Conference Finals. We are counting on that. We want to go to Orlando Sanchez. He's live inside courtside at the Moda Center. And Orlando, you were there for that crushing defeat that still stings for fans in Denver on game five. What do they need to do to come back, bounce back? Laurel, that is the question tonight. Can they bounce back after what was a nightmare where they trailed by as much as 31 points in Denver? Yep. I was there, and our very own John Canzano was in Denver as well. John, can this team bounce back after what was just an embarrassing performance? Well, look, we've seen them deal with bigger things than a loss this to season. The owner now? dies three days before yep. the season okay. starts. Yusuf Nurkic goes down with that terrible leg injury. So, yeah, they can bounce back. They've had adversity this season that is that, that, paled, that makes this pale in comparison so but look they're professionals I felt like the fourth quarter even Terry Stotts a Blazers coach they shut it down he had Lillard on the bench he had McCollum on the bench I felt like they gave up trying to win game five now game six it's win or go home or go to Cancun or whatever <laughs> NBA players do at the end of the season right. so yeah they have to show up to play Terry Stotts about a minute ago, John, just mentioned in his pregame press conference that he didn't turn down the fact that Damian Lillard could play this entire game tonight because the stakes are so high, John. How important is it for the Stars to show up after putting on a performance that they did less than 48 hours ago? Lillard's going to get his, but me, I'm looking at the than I am Damian Lillard. I believe he'll show up. And I know a lot of Blazer fans, I even walked by the ticket office. There's still tickets available to this game. Wow. It's not a sellout yet. The ticket office is open. But I know Damian Lillard will show up. But will Al Farouk Amino show up? Will Mo Harkless show up? Will they get something out of Ennis Cantor? They haven't in the last two games. Those are the bigger questions for the Blazers. Well, they've got to show up. And John, you mentioned tickets. The Denver Nuggets already selling tickets yeah. to the Western Conference Finals. How do you think Rip City reacts to something like that in terms of the environment of this building tonight? Well, look, I don't think Denver's afraid. I mean, they came in this building in game three, went to four overtimes and lost. Then they won game four. I don't think the Denver Nuggets are afraid to come in here. So I think Portland's got to be ready because uh, the Nuggets will bring the fight. Nice work, John. As you Thank mentioned, you. it is win or go home. The Portland Trail Blazers, Denver Nuggets, game six, Western Conference semifinals. It is going down at seven. 30. We'll send it back to you for now. Orlando, thank you. John, thank you as well. Appreciate the breakdown there from two men standing courtside to a man who spent a lot of time on the court. Michael Holton, Blazers radio analyst right now joining us and former player. Thank you so much for taking time on this busy day to talk to us. How do you feel about tonight's game? Uh, I feel excited. You know, I think the Blazers, uh, as a pro player, you always want to have games that have significance or added significance. So this is certainly a big stage game and an opportunity to have that game on your home floor. You're doing the analysis on TV for us too, but you were a player on the Blazers 1986 to 1988, I think. So you've been out there, you've been on the road. What's it like for them to be on the road, playing on the road and then playing at home? What's the difference? Well, the difference in a playoff series is uh, the on the road part is a little more significant. And game five is the outlier in this series. The series has been evenly played in every game with the exception of game five. On the road, the Blazers had the unperfect storm of missing 
their first six shots on the road, crowd got involved, and then you play catch up the rest of the way. So that's an outlier. But now you're at Motor Center, and you're going to have the Motor Center crowd behind you. Home teams make runs. I think the Blazers are going to have some big runs in this game and come out victorious. When you when you get blown out on the road, when you're in a series, whether it's in the playoffs or the regular season, and you get blown out by close to 30 points. What does that do to you psychologically going into such a big game, despite the fact that it is at home? I think it gives you a psychological advantage. I mean, pros are very resilient. I don't think the Blazers, matter of fact, I know they did, and I was there. I was on the bus with them after the game. I was in the hotel. Nobody's hanging their head. Nobody feels like, oh, wow, we, we, we're embarrassed. We don't have an answer. It wasn't a game where there wasn't an answer. They didn't lose by or get down by 31 because they didn't have an answer. Uh, they missed those first shots, and the home team got momentum. And yeah. You don't overanalyze that as a player. Maybe just a chip on the shoulder coming into the night rather than being discouraged. Yeah. Everybody in the Blazer locker room is excited about the opportunity. Nobody's in the Blazer locker room going, oh, wow, I don't know if we're going to be able to shake off game five. <laughs> right. Well, tell us a little bit about this team. You you were on the bus. They have overcome a lot of adversity. They started this season right after Paul Allen died. He was, was so involved with the team. And then uh, Yusuf Nurkic shatters his knee. I think it was shatters his leg. I think that was the night they actually clinched the playoff spot. Was, yep. they've, they've overcome so much. So tell us what's different about this team. Well, I, I think – when you get the shared experience of overcoming adversity together, you start to feel like it's a special bond, a special season, a special opportunity. And this team in this season has that feel to it. Uh, you know, you mentioned a few things. Uh, Mr. Allen passed away. Yusuf Nurkic got injured. Uh, C.J. McCollum missed some games to injury. And then there was the in-season roster development of adding Ennis Canner and Rodney Hood, guys with playoff experience. So a lot of unique things have happened during the course of this season that have prepared this team to collectively respond to the task at hand. Michael Holton, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Good yeah, insight. It's a pleasure to have you here and meet you in person. It's my pleasure, Laura. Well, we hope you bring <laughs> good luck. The team has good luck, and it's going to take some mighty fans. And we want to introduce you to a super fan who's been a fan since way back in the days of Drexler and Porter. Joe Ranieri has that story. There are Blazer fans, Blazer fanatics, and then there is Jesse Dunkel. This stuff I've lost in the, in the years. This is his man cave, filled with everything, you guessed it, Blazers. Um, I've stuck with them just because if it's my childhood, you know, watching them play with grandma and grandpa, you know, sitting on the couch and watching them play. I've always been a, a true fan. He's collected just about everything you can imagine, from championship bottles to old Dairy Queen mugs of Blazers past. The most special, probably the Weedy Bucks. The Blazers are a huge part of his life, from coordinating what he'll be wearing on his feet for games to planning his wife's birthday weekend around game four. I went to the game on Sunday, and I had to make sure that we left the beach in time and Oh man, she was not happy, um, and it's been a couple other occasions. It doesn't stop there. During the season, he plans his entire life around the team. We have a, uh, a whiteboard in our kitchen with, with schedules of the boys' events and, you know, doctor's appointments or whatever, and I go back and put Zers, you know, home at what time and away at this time. Jesse never misses a game. If he's not at the Moda Center, you can find him at his house watching on his 102-inch projector screen with one of his most loyal companions, his Great Dane. Uh, I'm like, how about Blazer? And uh, everybody's like, yeah, we love it, love it, love it. And you know, now we, we call him Blaze most of the time. Like most Blazer fans, we're all hoping to get past Denver and beyond. Jesse is ready to let his emotions run free if that happens. Uh, probably bring tears to my eyes. Uh, you know, Western Conference Finals, that's been a dream of mine. Tonight, though, he just wants a win against Denver. A uh, Rip City, baby. Like, <laughs> let's get this game tonight. And that's what a lot of people want to have happen out here. And then, of course, go to Denver later in the weekend. But it was really fun covering this story because I got a little nostalgic covering this piece because he had a lot of the stuff I had in my bedroom when I was a kid, especially the Dairy Queen uh, pint glasses. And I know I never should have got rid of them and have to go, have to go on eBay and try to get them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be sitting on some, some uh, fortune there. Uh, so I was going to ask you that. Did you get a little bit – how did it feel covering these super fans? Get, did it get you a little bit more inspired for tonight? He did. I mean, he we're about roughly the same age, and, you know, he, he talked about a bingo, bango, bongo, baby. It was this expression in the early 90s for the Blazers. And Rip City, Rap City was a couple of songs that we came out very popular during the playoff run in the late 80s, early 90s. So it was just getting excited. And he was talking about that. He's as excited as he was when he was a little kid. I mean, he's been covering, watching these guys for 30 plus years now. Yeah. Well, fans like you guys, fans like Rip City, we got to win tonight. Exactly right. Huge, huge game tonight. Thank you, for Joe. Sure. Joe, appreciate it. We're going to send it back to Kathy and Chris, but we'll be back with more from the Moda Center. 
uh, at 6.30. A little nostalgia. All right, guys, thank you for that. And we'll have more Blazer coverage a little later as we get closer to tip off. For now, though, other news of the day, starting with something affecting a lot of people, surprise medical bills. Today, President Trump called on Congress to help protect people from getting stuck with large, unexpected bills after a hospital visit. More now live from KGW's Kyle Laboshi, who is in the newsroom with us. And Kyle, this is an issue that's come up at the state level, both in Oregon and in Washington. Indeed. Right now, though, President Trump is calling for federal action. The president said Democrats and Republicans on Capitol Hill should work quickly to stop surprise medical billing. Here's the problem. When you go into a hospital, you may be treated by a doctor who accepts your insurance. But if someone else comes in to help you who isn't in network, the patient is likely to end up with a separate bill from that provider. Often, there's no warning and no limit on what they can charge. As a result, consumers are left with huge surprise medical bills. President Trump said no family should be blindsided by outrageous medical bills. He wants to limit the cost of out-of-network emergency care. It's ruined people's lives. They leave a hospital with something they think is going to be routine, and they end up in court, and they end up going to court, and then they end up with lawyers' bills that are bigger than anything they could have imagined. They get it from every side. We're not going to have that anymore. Yeah. Surprise, medical billing is an issue we've been covering for several years by sharing the stories of local families stuck with big medical bills. And Oregon lawmakers took action in 2018 by approving legislation protecting consumers from surprise out-of-network bills. And just last month, Washington did the same. In fact, Washington's governor is scheduled to sign that bill later this month. As for the federal legislation, bipartisan members of Congress say they're ready to introduce a bill in the coming weeks.